Namaste and welcome to KYG Kaivalya Yoga Gurukulam and to this KYG Shrine uh, series that we are doing where we are explaining the inner significance of all these idols that are here in the KYG Shrine and why we have placed it. In today's vlog, I'm going to discuss the Vishnu part of the Kaivalya Lingam. In the previous two episodes, we saw the Brahma base and all of that. So let's come to the Vishnu part. This is the Vishnu part, the centerpiece, where you have the spout facing towards the north. And this centerpiece, this is what we normally see in all the temples because the Brahma base is usually under the ground. I've mentioned this in the previous log as well. So if you haven't seen and you're just bumping into this vlog, uh, vlog, so please go back and see the previous two so you'll have a connection. This is what we normally see. This in Tamil, we call it the Avadiyar. This is the basis from where the Lingam emerges. So this is the Vishnu part. Now the way the Kaivalya Lingam is designed, inside this, because this is a cylindrical piece that has gone in, the base of the Vishnu here, the Lingam itself is cut into eight parts. You can see this, this octagonal shape here. And the bottom base was four parts. Now we are talking of the eight energy. This is where the eight energy of Vishnu, the eight aspects of Vishnu is manifesting. Because of that, only the 16 will come up. So without Vishnu, Rudra will not manifest. These are energies I'm talking of, not separate gods. Okay, these are all energies within us. Brahma energy is where creation happens and we explored this in our previous vlog. Now that creative seed that begins to sprout from within us, that creative spe uh, seed which is sprouting as this creation around us that we see, is now contained in eight with within eight different energies. All of the realities that you and I talk, we say come to realities, let us be real, um, this is it, this is science and this is all of this. This, what we call real, is defined by eight energies. Once we understand this, then the creative energy will actually manifest. And this is where Sanatana Dharma talks of uh, you and I are co-creators in our destiny. Destiny is not something from above that has landed and we are somehow victims of our lives. We are co-creators. We are, but then when I say we are or I am, it doesn't mean from an ego point of view. It is when I understand that I can co-create once I understand my place in the cosmos, place in the universe. Once I understand these eight energies, then I will be able to harness that energy and shape the life the way I want it to shape. I create my own destiny when I'm in harmony with the divine cosmic forces, not without that. All right, let's explore the eight energies of Vishnu. This is also popularly known as the Digpalakas, the Ashta Digpalakas, the eight guardians of the eight directions, if you will. They are known as that, but they're not necessarily only linear directions. These are energies from eight sides that we need to understand within which you and I are operating. So the one that is facing east, that is the Indra energy. Indra is the, the enlightened mind. Indra is a very strong and a powerful energy. Uh, for those of us who, who have a, a partial understanding of Indian mythology, we somehow demean Indra as a god who is constantly drunk or he is, he is divided between demons and, and the, uh, and the, and the uh, divine forces and the demonic forces. He goes, runs back and forth. That is uh, unfortunately a poor character that is created for uh, cinematic purposes, for storytelling purposes. There's a deeper meaning to that. This represents our mind, right from the state of confusion to the state of enlightenment. Remember, however we portray this character Indra in our mythology, remember one thing, that he has access to Shiva. He has access, in the stories I'm saying, he has access to Vaikuntha. He can go anywhere he wants. He has access to the supreme places. So Indra is a very powerful energy. That is the energy of the mind. And the mind is the one that can lock me. The mind is the one that can release me. Karanam bandha moksha yoho manasyeva manushyanam Karanam bandha moksha The mind is responsible for either bondage or liberation. That is the energy of Indra. So we bow to our own mind and say you are so powerful. Guide me in the direction. So when the sun rises in the east early morning, we do sun salutations. We actually bow to this powerful energy of Indra. 
then comes this part the southeast part the southeast part is agni the element of fire the one that brings life into us without fire there is no life right fire when i say fire it's it's just not uh, fire as as we understand like lighting a matchstick and seeing a flame that is there too but it's also electromagnetism it's electricity it's um, all of that right so the electromagnetism in the universe all of that comes under this element of fire without this there is no communication there is no life at all on earth we need warmth to survive so this is that agni element within which we operate okay then comes the yama element this is south south is the energy of yama facing south what does that mean yama is the god of death for those of us who know a little bit of this mythology death means limitation don't understand death as something bad um, but death is limitation what is what is the one that limits us that is time so this is actually an energy of time yama represents the energy of time that is why i say his time when somebody dies we say his time was up right it is all time time is what determines the idea of birth time is what determines the idea of death kala so yama represents kal as in we say in hindi yama represents time yama represents a sense of boundary limitation this is it no more so we have to respect that we have to embrace the yama energy not run away from the yama energy run away from death run away from limitation we have to embrace it and say okay i know the limits of my body i know there is a time element to this body okay so i have to embrace that so you have indra agni fire then you have yama which is time then comes the south west part of the lingam the south west part of the lingam is called nirudhi nirudhi is what we understand allow me to say this mindfully these are called the demonic forces the demonic forces means the forces that bind us to our senses bind us to this reality bind us to our preconceived conditioning of our mind because when i say oh no this is all not too much for me this is something i cannot understand i don't want to do all this where does all these thoughts come from nirudhi that is the energy that is governing we have to respect that and we have to overcome that we have to harness that energy as well nirudhi therefore therefore it's considered a demonic force um not necessarily demonic i'm not using the right word but it is that kind of force because it's opposite to that is ishana and we'll come to that which is the divine force so they are in, al- always pulling us between this the demonic and the divine the good and the evil is what our life is right so we have to accept that too so there are forces that will keep me bound there are forces that can pull me backwards keep me grounded uh, and and ref- uh, uh, prevent me from going out of my comfort zone like laziness fear doubt anxiety all of these are energies of nirti not that they are bad but we have to understand and keep them under control so indra agni yama nirudhi and then west comes varuna varuna is water varuna is rain varuna is life in all its abundance because without water there is no life so there is that energy of life so varuna brings life into us just like fire is necessary for life the other element is water varuna is water varuna varuna is rain varuna is abundance grace greenery and all of the beauty of nature that we see around us is brought by varuna uh, the oceans and the rivers that we see around us the importance of the flow of fluids and blood in our body and all of the other fluids the seven types of dhatus and all of that inside our body are all the energies of varuna if we are able to harness the energy of water not only do we get electricity for our homes as you see in these days but when internally when we harness the energy of water water represents emotions when we ha- harness those energies powerful 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 energies of indra will begin to manifest so these are all working in harmony with each other right we are trying to create a reality so please follow me with that they are not separate things though we are mentioning them separately they are all interlinked and finally they manifest as the 16 colors which we'll come to that in a separate video 
So, so far we had Indra, we had Agni, we had Yama, we had Niridhi, we have Varuna. Then we come to this part, this is Vayu. Vayu means air, Vayu represents gases, Vayu represents all the kinds of prana that is going within us and all the types of air uh, and gases that we see in the universe around us. So that is another energy that helps us shape our reality. So you see all the elements are finding place here, water, earth, fire, um, air. So when I say Vayu air, understand this Vayu as gases uh, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, nitrogen and all of those gases around us. Also the pranas, the five types of prana, prana, apana, udana, samana and vyana, all these five types of pranas that are within us. That is the vayu energy that is going on, that is opposite to the agni energy. So for homework, write these down, in, uh, draw an, oct uh, an octagon and write these energies down and then observe the opposites. And try and explore what is the meaning of why is Varuna opposite to Indra. This is not my making. This is all there in the scriptures that the Ashtadik Palakas, they have given certain directions. Then explore the combinations of these opposites. And then you will begin to understand a deeper, a deeper picture will evolve in your own mind. Allow that inner guidance to guide you. Everything need not be spelt out, right? So you have Vayu here. Then you have the one facing north. Here, north represents the energy of Kubera. Kubera is the god of abundance, the god of wealth. All the resources that we need at that moment in life. Holding is not a sign of abundance. I may have a huge bank balance, that is not necessarily a sign of abundance. I have to use it at the time I need it. That is a sign of abundance. So if I have 100 rupees in my pocket or 10 dollars in my pocket, at that moment, if I need 10 dollars or 100 rupees, if it is there in my hand at that moment, that is abundance. If I have a thousand rupees in the bank, a thousand dollars in the bank, and at that moment I'm not able to get a hundred rupees or a 10 dollars, then that is not abundance. So the availability of resources at that moment in your life when you need it, that is abundance. While we chase large bank balances, while we chase big homes, most of it we don't need it. But then we chase that because we are under this bizarre idea that somehow that is going to give us security. But what is really important from this energy you understand is when I need something, let it flow towards me. Let the universe give it to me at that moment. And if the universe begins to do that, when that flow is established, then every moment of your life, whenever you need, whatever you need is presented to you. Isn't that abundance? What else do we need then? So that is the energy of Kubera, that is facing north. In the side, there is Kala, Kala, Yama on the south. So south you have something that limits and here you have abundance that comes. So abundance has to come with limits. So that's why I said explore these opposites. You will have a lot more revelations that will come to you and allow the intuitive energy of the divine to guide you. Then you come to the northeast. The northeast here is the Ishana. Ishana is opposite to the Nirudhi that we learned on this side. So this side you have demonic forces, Ishana represents the divine forces, the spiritual energies, the energy of devotion, the energy of faith, the energy of believing something more than what the senses can give you. Right? That is what people say, blind faith and all that. Let, let those who have to say that, say that. But this is the energy that says there is something more than the senses can give me. The eyes see something, the ears hear something, the taste comes. All of this is presented by the Niruti from this side, the southwest. But there must be something more to life, right? What is that something more? Ishana presence. This is a divine energy that flows. That's why when you have an altar in the house, when you want to meditate, northeast is a beautiful direction to sit down and face and meditate. East, north or northeast, right? From the north, if you sit, you have the, you have the abundance flowing in. Northeast is this divine energy that flows in. East, you have an enlightened mind that awakens along with the sunrise. So, this is Northeast, Ishana. These are the eight energies of Vishnu. You have Indra, Agni, Yama, Niridhi, Varuna, Vayu, Kubera, and you have Ishana. I guess I have kind of basically explained the basic parameters of these powerful eight energies 
that help us shape the reality that has found birth in the depths of our consciousness as sound in the Brahma base. So Brahma gives energy to creation or rather plants the seeds of creation and those seeds begin to sprout and they are contained within these eight directions. These eight energies comes from the energy of Mahavishnu. These energies, when this eight is presented in the form of sounds, Om Namo Narayanaya, they are Om Namo Narayanaya, eight sounds. Eight sounds represent eight. So when I go on chanting Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya, then what happens? That energy that is forming in my, in my subconscious is now invoking all, all of these eight directions together. Otherwise, tell me, without a mantra like that, without a sound pattern like that, how do I think of all these eight? I have to think of each one, memorize each one, and say, oh my God, what was that direction? What was this direction? It's good to know it. But at any given moment, how do I invoke all of them together? Is there a divine form? Is there a divine energy by which all of these forms are automatically invoked in my subconscious? There is. That is the beautiful form of Mahavishnu. This is the form we celebrate. This is the form or the energy of Mahavishnu now. That means a combination of all the eight. Mahavishnu, you have to decorate Mahavishnu. You have to celebrate your life because your life is now finding expression within these four, I'm sorry, within these eight boundaries. Life is forming itself. So celebrate that formation. I am short. I am tall. I am dark. I am white. I am educated. I am uneducated. I am an Indian. I am an American. Uh, all of that is immaterial. I am born. I am alive. And therefore, let me celebrate who I am. That celebration of life is the energy of Mahavishnu. He celebrates. That is why the stories of Mahavishnu is Krishna. He celebrates who he is. Rama, he is the king. He celebrates and he believes something and he achieves that. So all of those powerful energies come from celebrating who we are. Celebrate your uniqueness. My Guru Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba was born in a village. He dropped out of school at eight, uh, in the eighth grade. He knew nothing other than one, one language. He was born in a village which was not in the map of India. How did he achieve what he did? He celebrated who he was. He said, I have a purpose in life. I want to bring harmony of religions. He brought about the concept of religion of love, right? When everybody else is fighting between you and me. So that, how does that happen? This energy of Mahavishnu manifested in him in all his glory because he began to celebrate who he was. He celebrated his uniqueness. He didn't look down upon his uniqueness. He didn't look, he wanted to become somebody else. So you and I, we have to celebrate our uniqueness. Find out what is your purpose in life and let Mahavishnu guide you. Brahma gives birth to you. Mahavishnu guides you into creating reality and then manifest your true destiny in the form of Rudra. Let us explore the 16 colors of Rudra in another vlog. As always, I hope this is a little more clearer. These are very complicated topics and yet, in a sense, they are fairly simple when you take them and say what does it make sense to me how do I apply it in my life personalize it there is something called Mano Dharma Mano Dharma is the Dharma of your mind ask your mind to teach you believe in what your mind tells you at that moment take it it will change as your experiences come in life as your awareness increases you will change those concepts but at that moment you need a step to step on so allow your mind to give you that step and Understand this at your own level and then say this is what I can understand at this point and let me make good of it. Allow the life to get transformed with this divine Mahavishnu's energy and therefore we chant Om Namo Narayanaya. Thank you as always for watching. Stay blessed, stay inspired. Namaste. Oh.